Hey, what's up guys? I'm Tiger with Tiger Uppercut Media back with another Dokkan battle video. And in this video, I want to highlight a few units that I personally feel are in desperate, desperate need of Extreme Z Awakenings in order to be considered relevant or even at all usable in today's day and age. And obviously there are a lot of other units out there that could use or could benefit from Extreme Z Awakenings. So if you feel like there's a unit that I missed on this list, then feel free to let me know in the comments down below. And if the list is long enough, then maybe I'll make a separate video with your suggestions as well. But for the ones that I'll be talking about in this video, these units I literally just found by scrolling through my box. And they're ones that I know will make me cringe every single time that I pull them by accident while going for another unit. And I just really, really hate them guys. So <laughs> hopefully there is a Bandai Spy out there right now taking some notes because these guys are definitely or definitely should be in line for Extreme Z Awakenings sometime in the near future. And I guess we'll start with the STR Zamasu here. Now, to be fair to him, He's actually far from the worst unit on this list. Some of the other ones later on are definitely far, far worse. But that being said, he's still pretty damn bad. So his leader skill is all types key plus two, HP, attack, and defense plus 30%, which is extremely irrelevant. Um, nobody's gonna be using him as a leader unless you literally started the game like today. So if they just made that leader skill something like um, extreme types key plus three, HP, attack, and defense plus 70%, That'd be pretty solid, or even a secondary Realm of Gods leader, like 100% or 120%, maybe I'm asking for too much, but uh, that'd be pretty nice, that'd be pretty nice. Okay, Super Attack is actually not bad, causes supreme damage and greatly lowers defense, I don't mind that. But my main issue with this card here is his passive, Warped Aesthetics, attack plus 60%, and recovers 10% HP, and you're like, yo, dude, that's actually not too bad, man. 60% attack, 10% HP, it's not great, but it's far from the worst passive, right? But then you have to read the second part where it says, whenever HP is 80% or below. So essentially, when you first start the fight at 100% HP, this guy's gonna have no passive, like no passive at all. He does not get the attack, he does not recover HP, until you fall below 80% HP. And then if you get healed back up above 80% HP, he's once again gonna have no passive. So, I mean, there are a lot of good things about this card. They you know, great categories, um, pretty decent links as well. But uh, it's just the fact that he has that HP restriction that really, really bothers me. If they just took that away, gave him a little bit more attack, gave him some defense as well, kept the recovery for HP, he'd be a perfectly fine card, man. You could actually, I don't know if he'd be as good as the Insamasu, but he'd be close, right? So yeah, there you go. Like I said, he's not the worst card on this list, but he's still pretty, pretty damn bad. Okay, so that's number one. And by the way, if you guys aren't aware, he Dokkan Awakens from this STR Zamasu right here. And I have pulled literally 10 plus copies of it, maybe 15, I don't even know, but uh, more than enough copies to rainbow him. So man, like... <laughs> Give it, make him useful, please, man. Make him useful. Okay, next up on the list is Tech Pycon, and uh, once again, he has some good things going for him, but it's just the passive that really, really kills him. So his leader skill is Tech and STR types, key plus three, HP, attack, and defense plus thirty percent. Once again, a very low buff, but if you just increase those percentages, he could he could be pretty damn good. And uh, Super Attack is Hyper Tornado, causes supreme damage, and greatly lowers attack. So for the re like for that reason alone, just for the fact he greatly lowers attack, he still actually can be useful in certain modes, especially if you're a newer player and you're struggling with some of the boss fights in Dokkan events and stuff like that. Having him greatly lowers the bo lower the boss's attack uh, could actually help you a lot and save you from getting killed by a super. But that being said, um, his passive. <laughs> Is, is is very bad, is very very bad. His passive gives him key plus 3, attack plus 7,000, and defense plus 3,000 when facing only one enemy. And if it was just key plus 3, attack plus 7,000, defense plus 3,000 alone, just a flat boost, that would have already been 
quite awful, but you, you, you add the fact that he only gets this buff when facing one enemy. If you're facing two, three, four, whatever, um, he's gonna have no passive just like Zamasu. Uh, that's pretty bad, so definitely take away the restriction, give him percentage boosts, and we'll be good to go. We'll be good to go. And he's actually, like I said, not bad because he does greatly lower attack, which is not a mechanic that a lot of units have. And uh, it's actually, I feel like, very underrated because it can make a huge difference when you're fighting bosses. I mean, I can even see this guy being like possibly useful for things like um, Super Battle Road and stuff like that if he gets more defense and more attack on his passive because of the greatly lowering attack. Like, it does make a huge difference. So, once again, these two guys, not the worst but not good by any means. Not good by any means. So definitely hoping these two get Extreme Z Awakenings. And then next up, we have the uh, STR Majub. And this STR Majub, um, yeah, he, he, he's bad. He's, he's quite bad. All types, Q plus three. That's it for the leader skill. Um, I would like actually to see him become a Shadow Dragon Saga leader, just like even 70%, 100%, something like that would make him pretty decent as a secondary uh, leader. And then his super attack is supreme damage and lowers attack. Not too bad if they kept supreme damage and uh, kept lowering attack, I'd be okay with that. But his passive only gives him attack and defense plus 7,000 when HP is 30% or above. And, you know, while it's better than like if it was, you know, 80% or below or 70% or below, why do you, like, why is there an HP restriction? Okay. Here's the reason, you know what, I'm gonna answer my own question here. It's because they're very old cards, right? They're very old cards. But then when you compare them to a lot of cards in today's day and age, even like free-to-play units, okay, these cards, there, there, there is at least one free-to-play card out there that is better, actually there's multiple, but at least one that is better than every single card on this list. And keep in mind that every single one of these cards are token awakened. They're rebirthed cards, right? It's not just SSRs I'm talking about. These are cards that got token awakenings and are still this bad. But anyways, um, HP restriction is stupid here, even though, you know, you're not gonna be falling below 30% HP that often, but even if you're getting the 7,000 attack and defense, his stats are not gonna be amazing. His, um, you know, he gets only has supreme damage for his multiplier. So overall he's, just not really doing damage or tanking it by any means. So yeah, give him percentages, that'd be good. Take away the HP restriction. And uh, yeah, he could be pretty decent. He could be pretty decent. All right, moving on now to this STR, no, this uh, physical Piccolo. And uh, we're, we're really scraping the bottom of the barrel now, guys. The next couple of units are <laughs> absolutely atrocious. Like, let's say, the ones we just talked about, the last three, were just like pretty bad. The next couple are absolutely awful. And we're starting with this guy right here. Um, <laughs> Physical Piccolo, a true master's dignity. Attack and defense plus 30% when HP is 80% or below. This guy only gives you a leader skill if you're below 80% HP. So if you thought the other guys were bad, like key plus two, attack and defense plus 30%, nah, this guy doesn't even give key and he only gives attack and defense when HP is 80% or below. His super attack, Hellzone Grenade, gives him extreme damage or deals extreme damage, which I believe is a 100 and, okay, 40, oh, that's actually not too bad. Actually not too bad, 140%, okay. Um, I underestimated him there, that's, that's not bad. But greatly lowers defense, that's pretty good too. But his passive only gives Defense plus 70% to all allies. And you guys might be like, yo, Tiger, he's a he's a support unit, man. That's pretty good. 70% defense is not bad. But that's his only passive, all right? That's his only passive. If it was, you know, attack to himself plus 30%, 50%, and also all allies defense plus 70%, or all allies defense plus 70% and key plus two, something like that, I'd be like, okay, you know what? For making your team more tanky, he might actually be okay he's still not good by, by no means is he good but just 70 percent defense nah that's, that's 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 terrible but i've also heard the argument that uh people are saying it doesn't matter if this guy gets an extreme z awakening because he was already replaced by the uh dokkan fest physical piccolo right and that may be true that might be true he was definitely replaced by the new physical piccolo but you got to keep in mind that not everybody has that piccolo right so um, if people don't have the other Piccolo, then maybe they want to run this Piccolo on the Namekians team. And right now, it's just not an option, man. I mean, it is an option, but he's not good enough to really be run over 
any of the other Piccolos in the game. So yeah, I really hope this guy gets an EZA as well. He is extremely old, as are some of the other cards on this list I'm about to talk about. But um, I mean, wouldn't it make more sense for Bandai to actually give the older SSRs Awakenings first, like Extreme Z Awakenings first, before some of the newer ones? Obviously, that's not really their strategy, but yo, just do it, man. Just do it. Okay. <laughs> Next up is Tech Vegeta, and if you guys don't know where he's from, he don't get awakens from this Vegeta right here, who is just so, so freaking bad, and he really does not get better after his Extreme Z Awakening. Um, forget about the leader skill, I'm sure you guys don't care about leader skills right now, but he causes extreme damage, which is a 130% multiplier, and his passive is one of the worst in the game. No question, possibly the worst passive in the game. K plus 3, attack plus 2500 when HP is 80% or below. Actually, no, one of the Gokus is worse later on. One of the Gokus is worse, but that's still really bad. K plus 3, attack plus 2500 when HP is 80% or below. Similar to the Zamasu, where uh, he only gets the passive when you're below a certain amount of HP, and 80% is a uh, pretty high threshold I think like you gotta lose 20% HP first to have a passive uh, at the very least Zamasu has a better passive he has a percentage passive and also heals right this guy just gets three key and 2500 attack that's it so uh, obviously increase the multiplier give him a percentage buff and uh, even give him a better leader skill maybe a pure Saiyans maybe Vegeta's family that'd be kind of cool that'd be kind of cool but you know it's probably gonna be just a tech type leader skill um, and in that case, if it's like 50, if it's like 70% or 90% too, that'd be okay, right? So, last but not least, actually no, we have two more Gokus, and they're both AGL Gokus. I'm gonna start with the one that I feel like is marginally better. <laughs> and when I say marginally, the bar is not very high for that, right? It's like very, very tiny bit better. So, uh, we have the long-awaited Serious Duel Super Saiyan 2 Goku. Uh, I believe he has the same leader skill actually as this Vegeta. Um, except this guy gives int types a buff, and this guy gives str types. Uh, no, it's int and agl. Okay, so that's the only difference between the two. Still trash either way. Um, supreme damage raises attack for three turns, which actually isn't bad for her for a super attack mechanic. But his passive guys, he gives key plus three for all allies when HP is 99% or below. <laughs> So when you first start the fight, this guy doesn't even give anything, and then once you fall below 99% HP, so you like lose a little bit of HP, he only gives key plus 3. That's all he does, man. He has no other passive, does not give himself anything. I mean, actually, to be fair, he does get the key plus 3 himself too, but... I mean, that's it? That's that's all, all he gets, man. And there's a HP restriction on the key plus 3. Like, are you kidding me? And why is his passive called Unbelievable Speed? Like, what is unbelievable? Or, or speedy about this passive right here. I don't I don't understand the, the naming convention or the naming. It just doesn't make sense to me. But it is what it is. You know what? Maybe they were trying to figure out just like how they wanted to do things back then. So you got to give them the benefit of the doubt in this case. And uh, just keep in mind that these are some very, very old ass cards. But still, that's, that's bad. <laughs> Okay, last but not least guys, we have the final AGL Goku, who Dokkan awakens from this Goku right here. Oh, actually, let me show you the SSR form of this Goku too. So he's this Goku, and then this one is uh, this Goku right here. Both awful, both make me want to die when I pull them, and uh, let's, let's talk about it. Okay, so first things first, he has extreme damage and rare chance to stun. Rare chance to stun, you know what, at least he stuns. That's the only redeemable feature about this card, at least. He stuns. Uh, did I say redeemable? Redeeming? Does either one work? I don't really know. Redeeming feature. Only redeeming feature about this guy is the rare chance to stun. He does extreme damage, which is a 115% multiplier. That is stupid, stupid low, guys. I, I don't know if there's any other, like, token awakened card that has a multiplier, like a super attack multiplier that's that low. And let's see. Um, passive, yeah. <laughs> His passive, Anger Management, this is by far the worst passive in the game for a UR, for a UR unit. This is by far the worst passive for a UR unit in this game. Anger Management, key plus 7 when HP is 50% or below. That's that's a thing, guys. That, that is real. That is a summonable unit in this game that has that passive. <laughs> oh my god. Q plus 7. Why does he need Q plus 7? I mean, okay. I guess back in the day, 
when he first got the awakening, leader skills were not as good, I guess, and it was harder to get super attacks off. So the fact that he could get plus seven key and almost guarantee a super is a good thing, right? It was a it was a big deal, I guess. But dude, look at the, look at this is a joke today. Like seriously, this is this is a joke in today's day and age, man. When you got like free to play units doing over two million damage that are getting like two hundred plus percent. Um, attack buffs on their passive when you meet like a bunch of conditions. I'm talking about specifically cards like the physical second form Frieza, for example, who can get who can get two, over 200% um, attack on his passive. Right? This guy is a summonable unit that's token awakened that gets Q plus seven, and <laughs> that's it when HP is 50% or below. That is wild. That is just. That's crazy. Okay, so that is uh, the last card I have to talk about. Those are the seven that I found in my uh, box just by scrolling through. I'm like, okay, I hate this guy. I hate this guy. I hate this guy. I hate this guy. <laughs> and that's how I came up with this list. Uh, like I said, guys, there are a lot of other units out there that could benefit from the EZA treatment. And if you feel like there are ones that I missed that should be mentioned in a video, then let me know in the comments down below. And like I said, if I compile enough of a list or a big enough of a list, then I'll make a separate video with your suggestions as well. But uh, yeah, those are the units that I have to talk about today. He is by far the worst one. Um, and here are the other ones. We have the other AGL Goku, Super Saiyan 2 Goku. We have the Super Saiyan Vegeta. I don't know what just happened there. Oh, I just zoomed in. Okay. And we have this physical Piccolo, all really bad. Majub, really bad. Uh, PyCon, pretty damn bad. And Zamasu, pretty damn bad as well. Um, I feel like the list definitely does get worse as we go along. So I guess it kind of makes sense as far as like a ranking system goes from like best to worst, but even the best one is really bad. So. <laughs> Yeah, that's gonna do it for today's video guys. Hope you enjoyed it as always if you like today's video then make sure To like the damn video and if it's your first time watching me first time to the channel and You like what you see Then definitely hit that big red subscribe button to join the tiger squad now And while you're at it hit that notification bell too so that YouTube knows you want to stay up to date with all my latest content And that's it. That's all I gotta say. Hope you guys have a fantastic fantastic day I'm Tiger with Tiger Uppercut Media, signing out.